public outburst at petroleum trade union workers. Parliament heats up over strike action. Four trade unions call off scheduled strike action. Surcharge powers for Auditor General recommended by World Bank, not accepted by government. Former First Lady Shiranti Raj Paksa requests for time to appear before CID. Welcome to Primetime News. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. And I'm Jitheni Gunasena. Let's start off with some local stories in detail. Starting off with some local news. Today, the country slowly began to return to normal following the conclusion of the petroleum strike. However, yesterday, residents living in the vicinity of the Kolonava Petroleum Storage Terminal retaliated against the petroleum trade union representatives for the obstructions caused during the strike action. <laughs> A heated debate took place in Parliament today when the motion to declare the unloading and distribution of petroleum products was tabled in Parliament. We saw Marikka's thugs. I was checking websites till 1 a.m. There was no assault at all. Usually, it is the Vallampitiya police that responds to such an issue. However, it was the Valikada police that stepped in. There were a lot of things that happened at this police station. These are the same thugs who assaulted people in Hambantota. The van carrying the thugs from Gampaha. We know about it. The chairman of the Sri Lanka Trade Union Association, Leslie Devendra, was in the Valikada prison. He came to have a discussion with the trade union's representatives and the president. However, these thugs did not allow it. There is a conflict between thugs inside the government. These individuals went to the Velikada police station yesterday and threatened the OIC. We will not make a request to the Prime Minister. He wants to bury democracy and carry on with the UNP government. We call on the President to withdraw this bill. UNP thugs singled out Sri Lanka Freedom Party trade unionists and assaulted them. Sri Lanka, Urtiya Swamidhi Niyojite and UNP Mariyotamayyave. The whole country is praising the government. 
Some of the parliamentarians here together with several social media sites and a drug-funded TV station are attempting to lay blame for what happened yesterday on me and portray me as a thug. I condemn these attempts. We are laughing our backside off when we see the false tears shed by these people who abducted journalists in white vans, assassinated journalists and shot people like Roshan Chanaka. We didn't mention Marikkar, the parliamentarian. We were talking about the underworld thugs, Marikkar. He is someone who wets his pants when he sees a gun. They speak of the nation, but they punctured tires of CPC Bowsers. They change the valves of diesel, petrol and kerosene. This is how they demonstrate their love for the nation. The government is not doing anything because of democracy and Yahabalnir. The public rose up against them and engaged in more demonstrations. Look what the people will do. Vimal Viransa said that I sent in thugs. We don't have passport allegations against us. We don't have allegations against helping our relative. My hands are clean. We don't have thugs, thieves or people involved in drugs. They are speaking on behalf of Aloysius and his money. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I said in Parliament that the goons of Marikar the thug assaulted people. If they are one and the same, I cannot help it. We remember how Gotabi Rajapaksa's goons from Kulonava assaulted people. This is the same thing that this government did if it wasn't Marika's goons who were there. We remember how Gotabe Rajpaksa's goons from Kolonava assaulted people. This is the same thing that this government did if it wasn't Marika's goons who were there. Reveal this to the people. You attempted to win over trade unions through Dominda Dinsanayaka and on the other hand you assaulted people to suppress this trade union fight. As a government, you revealed your true nature. <laughs> Politicians without any mandate are pointing the finger at me and telling me how I should act as a minister. You cannot gamble with your position. You cannot think of it as a horse race. I cannot act like that simply putting my priority in money. Whatever said and done, I will not allow activities which inconvenience the public as long as I am a minister. The oil tanks of the Hambantha report do not belong to the CPC. There is a way in which we can request for them. Uh, who do you describe as politicians without a mandate? MPs from the national list? Those who see that the hat fits can put it on. We took this decision after consulting the president and the prime minister because we saw how people were inconvenienced on the roads. This became an essential service because of this. I am of the view that we can have discussions, but that does not mean that we will be able to provide everything they ask for. The Javika Sevika Sangamir of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation expressed the following views on yesterday's trade union action. UNPers do not have hidden agendas like the JVPers. There is a team consisting people such as Raj Karna, Dilan, Venera and Jagat. There are few more animals in this team. These hooligans were drunk. The employees went inside by two. You are aware of how workers were assaulted outside. They were beaten up by area residents and they deserve to be beaten up. They were creating chaos on the streets using profanity. Let's have a look at some of the cards the uh, public has to display about this action. This should be the solution for the doctor's issue as well. The public should march up to the hospitals and surround them. Whatever they do, they make time to practice privately. We should surround the hospitals. We should hammer the doctors as well. Then all this will be resolved. If the government gives us the right to go and hammer these doctors, we are ready to do it and we are ready to go into remand for 14 days as well. Leave the common man alone. Don't engage in strike. Whoever it is, be it the doctors or the kins, these strikes affect the common man. They are playing with the lives of the people. I believe this is what is happening. The Port Employees Trade Union action, which was planned for tomorrow, has been postponed. We plan to launch a trade union action against the decision to sign the agreement on the Hamad report on the 29th of this month. We planned a trade union action together with the workers of the CPC. Officials have scheduled a meeting with the CPC for next Tuesday to discuss the Hamad report agreement. 
we have also received an opportunity to discuss this issue. Therefore, we have decided to temporarily suspend this action. This trade union, which is planning a trade union action, is acting in this manner outside the port premises. In comparison, they are not a very big trade union. However, if they want to engage in a strike, they had a right to do it. We have no issues. They belong to the Ports Authority. We will not relinquish that right to anyone. There were angry confrontations at the Valikada police station when a group of opposition MPs arrived at the location following the arrest of several trade union representatives. Labena Hammer Pamini Lak Sambandin, own Terehua Labena Pamini Lu and Napoluang, own Gain Labena Pamini Lu and Napoluang, Labena Hammer Pamini Lak Sambandin, we march in Axi. Nayama, Emma Amkis can order Paharadun Naki Lakiana, Mama Hitane, who even a Pamini Lak Policy Hilanildari could a Mukarakila. Kau rakyat ini pahar dulu, nana. Iti hilang nilai daripada kita family nila kiri mata yang wadah sudu sini. Ewe ni family nila kelabu not. Apik ani wara mega ni marshal ni kah. Madana darah ini. Urti ya samiti ya inna. Desun siya kita orang bidya ni meratan atau anda ber. You cannot make the country dance to the tune of a few hundred people in trade unions. The tail wags accord the needs of the dog, not the other way around. I saw members of the joint opposition entering the Valikada police station and berating the OIC. They were behaving in a disruptive manner and not allowing the law to be enforced. We can remember how we were assaulted in Hamban Thotav. If there was an assault inside the police station, the IGP, the Minister of Law and Order, can deal with it. <laughs> As the SLFP, we don't agree with the decisions taken by the trade unions of the CPC. We need to remind this group, including the former president, they sold acres of land to the Shangri-La Hotel. No one spoke about it then, and the cabinet wasn't even informed. 240 acres were sold off the Chinese company at the Port City project. No one protested back then. Some people spoke to us and said they felt there was a government in the country yesterday. Most of this is happening because of the democratic freedoms granted by our government. The people don't want unnecessary trade union actions that disrupts day-to-day -day activities. This was proven yesterday. TNA parliamentarian M.A. Sumandiran blamed trade unions for crippling the functions of the country during the parliamentary debate. So I would like to congratulate the president for declaring the supply of fuel as an essential uh, service uh, in this particular context. I believe I am expressing the general sense of disillusionment of the people of this country today when they see various organizations calling themselves trade union resorting to what they term trade union action, but in effect, political action to cripple the functioning of the country. The leading group of this is the Government Medical Officers Association, a group of professionals who ought to know better, who are said to have taken an oath, an ancient responsible oath, but who behave in this country worse than even criminals at times. And I say these words advisedly and with responsibility. Today, I won't say all the medical professionals, 
but certainly those who have taken control of this association called the GMOA are often holding the country to ransom. Leader of the opposition, R. Sampanthan, blamed the joint opposition for causing disturbances in the country and urged the government to take stronger control. There is a verdict to the people. A clear verdict to the people, both in the presidential election and in the prime ministerial election, that Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa is neither acceptable to the president nor as prime minister. That's a very clear democratic verdict. You can't topple governments as you like. You can't topple governments through strikes. You can't topple governments through conspiracies. You can't topple governments by persuading essential services to break down. And that is what this proclamation made by the president seeks to prevent. Trying to topple governments by uh, getting essential services to break, to break down, I think so is utterly, thoroughly undemocratic and cannot be accepted. And in the context of the opposition's demand consistently and continuously that his government must be toppled, one is inclined to think that is, that is joint opposition, which is headed by Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa, is responsible for a number of the disturbances that are taking place in this country, which is impeding and interfering with governance. People are entitled sir, to the benefits of proper governance by a, governance by a government elected by them. I think I must also caution this government. You must have the spine to govern. You must make decisions that are necessary. Government must take bold decisions. And government must be in a position to implement those decisions. I think it is your failure to make bold decisions and your failure to implement bold decisions that encourages your opposition to become difficult. You should demonstrate that you are governing efficiently and effectively. That is your duty. The opposition leader went on to address the accusations of government betrayal of the armed forces. The effort being made in this country to show that uh, this government is about to betray the armed forces in this country. We don't agree with that. There is no effort on the part of anybody to betray the armed forces. The soldiers who fought the war, fought the war on behalf of the government. There may have been soldiers, there were soldiers who, can, who committed certain crimes. They may be responsible for various matters, but that is not applicable to all the soldiers. But we all saw the way in which Field Marshal Sarath Fonseca, whom you claimed as being the best army commander in the whole world, was treated after the presidential election in 2005, 2010. You were in prison clothes. We saw you. We felt sorry for you. You were humiliated. You were insulted. You were the army commander. How can we accept that these persons who treated you in that way are concerned genuinely about war heroes or about soldiers? Are they not really trying to provoke tension in this country? The percentage of Sri Lanka's female representation in politics came under fire at a discussion held at the Lakshman Kadrikam Institute yesterday. The forum was on implementing the 25% quota for women in local government, comparative experiences on advancing women's political participation. The fact that women in Sri Lanka have had the right to vote since 1931 and this stark contrast where women's participation in parliament has never gone higher than 6%. Despite having had female heads of state for 25 out of the 69 years of post-independence history, the representation of women in politics in Sri Lanka is the lowest amongst South Asian nations and indeed globally. 
and this must change. Under the Conservative Women's Organisation, we have an organisation called the Conservative Young Women's Organisation. The second organisation that we have, which isn't affiliated to the party, but was actually founded, one of the co-founders is our current Prime Minister, Theresa May. Its focus is to ensure that we are match fit, we're ready to go. And through that organisation, the number of women MPs has quadrupled in 10 years. So it has been extremely successful. If you look at the structure of the party, there is no proper mechanism to bring women into politics. Every party uses women for its election activities, campaigning, and to make the party and the candidates victorious. But no one is interested in making the women victorious. Women have no place in the structure in main political parties. Politics has always been based on the power of money and a bit of violence. So in these aspects, women are lagging behind. Every politician has been labelled as a thief. So this creates a sense of fear that the leaders in the future are only the politicians who can face these challenges and scrutiny. Amra Khan from the Women's Parliamentary Caucus of Pakistan and Minister of the Scottish Parliament Claire Hoffey were among the notable attendees at the forum. Former First Lady Shiranti Rajapaksa has sought more time to appear before the Criminal Investigations Department. Shivanti Rajapaksa was informed to appear before the CID to provide a statement with regard to a SUV used by Yoshita Rajapaksa, which was in fact given by the Red Cross to the Cyrilia Savia Foundation. <laughs> The Attorney General's Department informed court that it has identified those who were travelling in the Jeep that followed the car driven by Tajuddin moments before his death. Deputy Solicitor General Dilan Ratnayaka informed the Colombo Additional Magistrate that the CID is cross-checking the photographs that were taken and is investigating the matter to apprehend the suspects. The case will be taken up on the 24th of next month. The charred remains of rugby player, the late Wasim Tajuddin, was discovered in his burnt car near the Shalika grounds in Narahenpita on the 17th of May 2012. Back then, police ruled that the car crashed onto a wall and caught fire. However, there were suspicions surrounding the death of Tajuddin and his body was exhumed in August 2015 for investigations. The investigators presented many facts to prove that the death was a homicide and arrested former senior DIG Anurasena Naika and an officer attached to the Narahin Pita police for concealing evidence of a crime. A separate judicial process is taking place surrounding the judicial medical reports on the Tajuddin homicide. The Wasim Tajuddin homicide case is still ongoing and those directly responsible are yet to be arrested. After the last May Day celebration, the former president has instructed his team to stop the Hamathura deal so that China gets angry, stop the oil tank deal to get India against our case and to stop Saitam so that this will stop the flow of FDIs which will result in the collapse of the government then they could easily escape from all the crimes they had committed. The investigations against them are coming to a close. Over the next few weeks, they will be brought up in court and they will be arrested for misuse of public property. That is why they are hastening their plans. They are also using some theros to pass the message not to arrest him. This is the law. The government has received a document from the World Bank on the draft audit bill. The World Bank review of the draft indicates the audit bill meets the eight core principles articulated by the International Organization of Supreme Audit Institutions as essential requirements of proper public sector auditing. However, the provision relating to surcharge powers has not been accepted by the government of Sri Lanka. This provision would elevate the Auditor General's Department of Sri Lanka to a supreme audit institution with financial and administrative autonomy. The delay in passing the audit bill was highlighted on Newsline with K.M. Kumar Singer, an audit superintendent from the Auditor General's Department. If this bill was passed, what would have been the situation surrounding the Treasury bond scam? 
Under the prison system, if a government officer commits a wrong that causes a loss to the government or damages public property, the process will force authorities to proceed through a lengthy process involving commissions, the FCID and the bribery commission. If the Auditor General was given powers in this regard, a surcharge could have been imposed directly on those government servants responsible. If the Auditor General was given the surcharge power, the money lost could have been claimed. Unfortunately, the act that has this power has not been passed. Is it because of the surcharge powers that the bill is being delayed? <coughs> Absolutely. The corrupt officials are aware that if the surcharge powers are given to the Auditor General, the Auditor General will use those powers to reclaim what is due to the government. An event to mark the 90th anniversary of the founding of the People's Liberation Army of China was held in Colombo yesterday. The event organized by the Chinese Embassy in Sri Lanka was attended by Chinese Ambassador Yi Jianling. State Minister of Defense Ruan Vijay Wardena was the chief guest for the event. I take this opportunity to express the heartfelt gratitude of the government of Sri Lanka for the extensive training assistance that the people of People's Republic of China has continued to provide over the years to the Sri Lankan military and defense personnel, which has been invaluable. Ladies and gentlemen, in the recent past, we have witnessed a dynamic development in the China-Sri Lanka relations. A meeting to discuss the effects of B-decide glyphosate was held in Colombo yesterday. There are 10 recommendations in the 2013 report. One is the banning of five types of weedicides and pesticides. Glyphosate was not one of them. However, it was banned. There is limited evidence to prove that it is carcinogenic and it affects kidney disease. WHO is very clear on this. They have given reports. If they can't fully convince us that there is a direct impact on CKDU or cancer, we call for the ban on glyphosate to be revoked, at least for the tea sector, for a limited time. There is another issue. We have reliable information that glyphosate is still in the market, although it has been banned. It is being smuggled from India via Putalam. Therefore, my argument is, if you regulate the imports, we can monitor this. Or this would lead to extremely low-quality glyphosate entering the market. Weedicides are necessary for commercial agriculture. That is my opinion. I cannot say that the ban on glyphosate was enforced based on scientific proof or evidence. None of the studies conducted in 2013 or 14 proved that glyphosate causes kidney disease. If we control the usage, we can gain some benefits. As a planter and someone involved in the trade, the lack of glyphosate is causing a number of issues to the plantation industry. I believe that the authorities should take another look at it. There is no direct correlation between glyphosate and kidney disease, even when it comes to paddy farming. This is a political motive. That is the truth. I approve what Navin Disanayaka says. The authorities should reconsider and make a practical decision. Now in cricket news, Sri Lanka off to a disastrous start to their first test outing against India, losing five wickets on day two in pursuit of India's first inning score of 600.